Hi, I'm taking a quick moment to say thank you for being here to Growth Factor. I'm Amalia, and you might want to share this interview, hit the subscribe button, as well as the alert button, which is just below. And everything you need is in the description, which is also below. And please don't forget to make a comment. And if you've got a great story, I'd love to interview you as well. I don't know if you heard about that. This is called no soiling effect. No soiling effect that's where your uh, toilet paper always remains white yeah after that's being me. used <laughs> always white yeah yeah that's called no soiling effect mm -hmm. and when you get this that's the um, sign of uh, recovery from leaky gut normalization of uh, work of junctions between um, between the cells in in your gut Hi, everyone. I'm so glad you're back to my show, Growth Factor. I'm Amalia. And today you are looking at my guest. His name is Misha Sakharov. He's an integrative health engineer. Thanks for being here, Misha. And if you could tell us your story, let's start with that. Thank you, Amalia. I'm um, very happy to be here and to, to have a possibility to inspire your audience. Um, well, my story is as many things in our life. This story is... Uh, uh, multifactorial, you know, because it's not a single factor that led me to my disease that were multiple set of set of multiple factors. It was partly my family life, um, some um, chronic, you can say chronic stress there, because uh, we had actually um, uh, very close uh, in my family, uh, a serious mental illness mm. um, um, and then so I felt like walking on eggshells every single day and uh, trying to recover from this and then it was um, a lot of stress in a working life because I've been working as engineer and project manager and been managing very often like seven to ten um, um, big projects, not like major projects, but uh, medium sized projects with many different parts involved. And um, there was a lot of stress there. I'm educated um, as an engineer, actually nothing to do with health as telecommunications. But when we are, um, you know, engineering study is interesting because um, we are taught to look at um, the source of the things and we look at uh, and when we built a bridge or we built a telecommunication platform for example um, to connect uh, different uh, companies or different cities together uh, or a bridge to connect um, to connect two cities um, divided by a river for example um, we need to look at many different aspects of environment in order to be sure that our construction and our project will um, will endure well if not through the centuries as a telecom system but maybe through uh, many years without major problems integrative health engineer i'm looking at health with the eyes of an engineer so basically what is very crucial for me it's to not just to um, to cure the symptoms, to help people to cure the symptoms, but actually un let people understand where are the sources for their problems, where what are the triggers for the problems. So when they deal uh, with the sources and with triggers, we have a really good chance to reverse um, the condition, but not just killing the symptoms but actually changing cellular health so the body will recover itself itself so and i understood that through my own personal story and my personal story was uh, born in russia in moscow uh, came to the west after an invitation to study in the end of the 80s so i spent i lived most of my life um, outside of Russia, in Denmark, actually, last year, 
I um, emigrated once more. Uh, second time in my life, this time to Bulgaria, to the Black Sea coast. And um, also because I was a product of my environment, I was always thinking that I need to leverage all the time. I need to leverage also personally. I need to leverage as much as possible. So the more the better, that was the motto. And that is, that is actually that is what I've seen afterwards in my uh, work with health with my clients, that it was um, an aspect that drove many people into suboptimal health, to say at least, and um, basically into disease. The more the better. So not understanding the power of moderation and not knowing where enough is enough not listening to your own body. So basically uh, being desensitized. And that is one of the major problem problems I found out afterwards when I've been working, um, uh, establishing my own protocol of working, of work with health. Um, and um, while I've been working as engineer in um, Denmark, and you know, um, this is as many things in our life. This story is uh, uh, multifactorial, you know, because it's not a single factor that led me to my disease. That were multiple set of set of multiple factors. It was partly my family life, um, some um, chronic, you can say, chronic stress there, because uh, we had actually. Um, uh, very close uh, in my family, uh, a serious mental illness. Mm. Um, um, and then, so I felt like walking on eggshells every single day and uh, trying to recover from this. And then it was um, a lot of stress in a working life because I've been working as engineer and project manager and been managing very often like seven to 10 um, um, big projects, not like major projects, but uh, medium sized projects with many different parts involved. And um, there was a lot of stress there. And um, also because I was a product of my environment, I was always thinking that I need to leverage all the time. I need to leverage also personally. I need to leverage as much as possible so the more the better that was the motto and that is that is actually that is what i've seen afterwards in my uh, work with health with my clients that it was um, an aspect that drove many people into suboptimal health to say at least and um, basically into disease the more the better so not understanding the power of moderation and not knowing where enough is enough, not listening to your own body. So basically uh, being desensitized. And that is one of the major problem problems I found out afterwards when I've been working, um, uh, establishing my own protocol of working, of work with health. So what I experienced in my um, um, in my early 40s, uh, I'm 56 right now, so in my early 40s what I experienced is um, major heart problems. I was mm, basically picked up um, by ambulance um, five times in my life and I've been trying, I tried to wake up in the ambulance five times and I was um, basically uh, getting um, a blackout, different places, um, a couple of times uh, in the um, in the tennis court. I'm an avid tennis player. I've been for many decades. Also pushing myself there. Um, I've been once. Uh, it was um, in the um, mountain mountain bike track in the hills, and I was not picked up there. I actually. Uh, laid there for some 
time, I don't know how much. And uh, I woke, woke up by myself and I felt like I've been uh, uh, very often in nature uh, together with my dog. He's uh, 11 years old now. He's a lab, Labrador uh, mix. Um, I love this dog. His name is Teddy. So he was licking my face and uh, uh, actually several times he brought me to life in this way, licking my face. So um, I experienced also not only waking up in the ambulance, but also waking up, seeing at the big uh, t dog tongue <laughs> right, right here. And it was nice, um, better than an ambulance. But um, then basically um, it was, um, a wakey wakey moment for me last time the fifth time i was picked up uh, i was brought to the hospital and i've been to the cardiologist uh, normal cardiologist also sport cardiologists so they could not find the problem yeah and the fifth time it happened um the uh, the doctor in the hospital he told he told me uh, i asked him you know what i'm gonna what what do i do you guys you don't know what's what's wrong with me and um, I'm here for the fifth time, different hospitals in Denmark. I'm here for the fifth time and I really don't know what to do. Um, and he said, you know what? When you come next time, we will sure find out. And then I got this idea. And if I'm come, if, if next time I'm coming to this place, like as a, cold, uh, a pretty cold uh, piece of uh, human, I don't know, Flesh were yeah. cold. It could happen, right? Mm -hmm. I didn't say this to um, the doctor, but I thought it to myself. And then I, um, I had this strong um, urge to take the responsibility for my health entirely in my own hands, entirely. And to say, okay, I said actually to myself, I've been driving from the hospital in a taxi. And I said to myself, okay, I'm going to do this. I'll find out. And I started working on it as an engineer, basically making a plan, trying to find an integrative solution that integrates what I believed was um, foundation of human health. And I tried to find out, okay, what kind of systems we have. We have 13 different systems, I found out, that are interdependent and interconnected in our body. Um, and then um, I tried to find out, okay, how do we get energy in and how do we use energy? What kind of systems are using energy? That might be some problem for me because I've been um, getting these blackouts. There was something with the energy distribution, I thought, at least energy acquisition and energy distribution. So I just thought, okay, we have a pool of energy, like 100%. Right, and it can be very different uh, in joules and kilojoules. It can be very different from day to day. Right? Sometimes you have maybe five thousand kilojoules available, or kilocalories, whatever. And some other days only three thousand. And so this pool is kind of have to be distributed um, very wisely, right? Because I know that we use some energy for uh, our digestive system, a lot of energy, mm. our brain. It uses 30% of our energy. Ah, oh, not thinking too much, maybe. Hmm. <laughs> not overloading uh, peristaltic processes and processes of formation, the uh, gut in the enzymes, uh, you know, in the gastrointestinal systems. It takes a lot of energy, formation of the synthesis of the enzymes. Mm, what else? Okay, maybe not to move too much. Too much. I mean, move all, do all of those things in moderation and then breathe maybe in moderation because I thought, okay, how do we get energy? Hmm. Basically, we get energy from the air and from the food. So and then I, I made this movement and then I thought, okay, ah, interesting. That's the main sources, how we get energy. And we, when we talk about nutrition, well, basically we all, always say, okay, what are the main macronutrients that are energy nutrients, right? And that is fat, protein, and carbohydrates giving energy. And then we we'll always forget that the main source for energy is actually oxygen. Mm. 
So I thought as an engineer, oh, that's interesting. I can actually connect nutrients together from two different sources, breathing in and eating. And then um, I made this, this uh, gesture. And then I thought, okay, how do we, what are the main sources of, dist um, of distribu distribution of the, uh, not the sources, but places where we distribute the energy to? And I thought, okay, that's the head, right? Because this is placed very st in a strategic way up. It sounds like in your 40s you had our heart issues. But before that, did you have any gut issues, mental health issues, skin, joints? Can you tell us yes. more? Because then I want to yes. get into what foods or exercise you utilized. Absolutely. Absolutely. I had gut issues all my life, actually. I had gut issues from as so much as so, I mean, long I can remember. I think about myself um, as a human being, basically. So um, diarrhea, basically, almost every day. Um, indigestion and um, I thought um, 20 years ago I've been in the hospital and I thought um, that I have some kind of maybe stomach cancer or something like that mm -hmm. or gut uh, cancer whatever and they said no you don't have um, anything like that but um, you have sensitive gut and I said what do I do with this they say oh eat carrots <laughs> And um, eat carrots, it, uh, and uh, it's, that's actually almost uh, literally what I, uh, the message that I got. Uh, eat salad, eat uh, all of those things, avoid meat. And um, so I've been actually, I, 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 uh, in my road towards health, I've I also been vegetarian. Not vegan, but I've been vegetarian for some years. And um, needless to say. Um, it did not help me, it did not help me. And um, basically because my first wife, she really wants to live that way and she really loved very complex recipes, Italian and uh, many, many different. And she used to go to the, uh, to the supermarket and buy some, uh, a lot of plethora of different kinds of things, mix them together. And um, she was really, she's a really good cook. Um, so Health-wise, it didn't help me. So what I found out, actually, when I've been visiting um, Russia in the um, in the nineties, in the two thousands, I found out that every time I go to Russia, I my um, uh, my gut becomes uh, uh, working better. Basically, I stop. Uh, having diarrhea and when I come back to Denmark I get diarrhea again and it was like several times I thought about this and said no this is interesting why does it happen and I found out that basically because um, we eat much more traditional food there and we eat uh, meat and um, we uh, there's no variability a lot of variability there's nothing like that variability that I get in Denmark with different kind of things mixed together. And I found out that I don't really enjoy it because basically I would enjoy it very much if my, if the food that I'm eating would result in me feeling mm -hmm. uh, like stable energy. Right. Um, and um, I'm a very active guy. I really want the, the idea of having stable energy was very uh, crucial for me, very important. And so I made this conclusion. Okay, that's interesting. I kind of connected one one together and said, okay, that's interesting. Let's see what happens. Yeah, and um, basically almost um, I started changing my nutrition and um, pretty much there also one of my friends, near friends, got a glioblastoma, got mm. a, a brain tumor. Oh. So those stories are kind of interwoven mm -hmm. into each other, you know, and that's why I say, you know, those uh, are very multifunctional, multifactorial, basically, those stories like yours and mine, they are always multifactorial. That's interesting. Talk about that, because sometimes when you're trying to explain to others, you find out, oh, that's interesting, because this is also connected about keto. I never heard about keto before. So I started to... Um, um, 
to research and I heard about ketogenic and it sounded very complicated to me and it sounded like uh, oh man I really don't know how it how do I how do I do this so and I found out um, also um, that uh, there's a actually might be a possibility to reverse brain tumor glioblastoma is the most um, aggressive brain tumor stage four mm -hmm. uh, with a very high heterogeneity and heterogeneity means uh, a differentiation of different kinds of population of mutation mm. with cells with different mutations mm. so that's why you cannot really target it with single targeted therapies because of high heterogeneity mm. and that's why it's deadly also there's many different aspects about this and I started to understand and kind of as an engineer uh, I was also on the brink of uh, leaving engineering telecom engineering because I was fed up with stress I was fed up with stress I couldn't really I tried to communicate the need to um, for knowledge sharing in the organization and things like that but my the board of directors would always say that's a very interesting um, very very inspiring presentation we will take it next year I got fired I got fired because I couldn't work anymore like that and I I was so much in stress that I stopped working and uh, right at that time I was certified with an international um, certification for project management high level and um, right after the certification a couple of, couple, couple of months after the certification the company that paid for two years of certification actually fired me it was a wake-up call serious wake-up call because then I understood that I need to change my life and it's a series of books it's called black swan resilience series black swan because we are in the in the time of black swans that are changing everything right now mm. it feels like that so it's beating food addiction without willpower in black swan times how to use keto carnivore nutrition to beat addictions as a main showstopper in your life a step-by-step -step guide um and you see um basically the the idea that's a lady that opens a fridge at night oh, and looks <laughs> That's a lady that uh, look, uh, looks uh, at the open fridge. That looks you. like me. Did you capture me last night? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. So that's... Kept opening. Uh, there's just nothing exciting in there. I just kept opening it. And um, yeah. And there's also will be a book where I explain very concretely with scientific um, um, quotations about four stages of ketogenic adaptation oh. and why they are very crucial to know. Uh, there's a lot of misunderstandings about the, uh, uh, the keto values in the, in the blood, for example. Many people think the more the better. And I prove um, that this is basically otherwise. Now, and I have two, um, two programs that I'm working with. One program is the program especially for oncology. I used to have many people with uh, um, most of the people with brain tumors there, mm -hmm. thir third and fourth stage, mostly oligodendriomas, um, um, astrocytomas, and also glioblastomas. And that's what I kind of known for. Mm -hmm. uh, but um, right now I have uh, mostly um, women with uh, breast cancer, actually, mm. and we have good results. That's how I found you is I was interviewing Pablo Kelly. Yeah. And he mentioned you. So I put up your website and your photo on that interview. And he mentioned that. So he has, or he has, or had glioblastoma multiform, the brain cancer yeah. that you mentioned. He was doing great. And then it started to grow. And you told him if that happens, mm -hmm. contact me. And he contacted you. And yeah. you saved his life because he was he needed to be moved in a in another direction. He was doing well, but not quite as well as as you you pushed him into. So that's that's it, you know I'm not I'm not uh, uh, saving anybody's life. I'm just uh, you see I'm a teacher that is showing the way. Yeah. When people are saving life, they are saving their own life themselves. Right. You see, the my problem is that I'm not a wizard. <laughs> I I don't have this one a wand 
actually. If I had it, I would work with the want like 24 hours a day, <laughs> but I don't have it. So the only thing I can do, I can inspire people. I can show the path. I can teach them and uh, give them the tools and then they have to use the tools. So they, when they save the life, their life, they save the life by themselves. And it requires a lot of work, a lot of work. That's why um, I don't just take people on my cancer program. It's always, they cannot buy uh, the program. They can only buy it after three stages of basically a funnel where people are going uh, through the fil filter system, basically. Mm -hmm. Here you have, that's, uh, that's my site, basically. This is, um, you can see, uh, it's called uh, Sakharov.com, S-A-K-H-A-R-O-F-F.com. And here you have uh, programs. You can book a session with me. You can have a trainer education program. We have certified trainers. I certified actually doctors this year for the first time, MDs. They're certified in my protocol, personal mentoring partnership, um, the science, there's a knowledge base that I made uh, actually for vegetarians and vegans. It's a free knowledge base. Here you have vegetarian, vegan versus carnivore, 63 articles, influencer interview, 62 articles, evolutionary human nutrition. And this is open. The rest is closed because that's, the, that's for my uh, program, people that are in the program. But those three first ones, they are open. Then we have ketogenic science, breathing science, fasting science, cancer neurodegeneration, Incredible. testimonials, FAQ. And then we have a Russian site, actually also a uh, site in Russian. And then we have site um, in English and uh, also site in Danish. But And the programs, we have two, metabolic health program and beat brain tumors program. And beat brain tumors, actually, there's right now, it's different kinds of oncology in it. This one, you can go this way. This one, you can go this way. Metabolic health program is program that everybody can attend and starts, as I said, almost every week. And this one, um, people can, um, uh, can apply for. And this is... Uh, I am endorsed by uh, an MD, a doctor that is medical director of the biggest functional medical clinic in Denmark, which I'm very happy. We have a cooperation here. So that's basically one thing. And another thing, we have Ship to Life and Ship to Life. That's our app. Oh. Ship to dot life. And we have a free um we have actually um a free um version that people can get where they can get the, all the measurement system for free the whole measurement system for free and all my meditations for free which are breathing meditations for morning for evening and for day uh, and those things are very very valuable because basically just those meditations can save life um and then I can show you uh, one of our, well, I can give you, show you two clients. The first client is the client that I just told you about with breast cancer. And her name is Ingrid. She's from, um, she's from Holland. That's the first things. And you can see that's uh, our, her, her measurements uh, she started in July, the start of July, July, August, September, October. That's four months. Mm. Um, those are measurements. Those are weekly averages for the developments. And um, uh, that's the measurements. Then we have exercise measurements also. And I can uh, surely explain all of them. But uh, mostly what um, I want to say that I told you about control pause, remember. And... Uh, when we're talking about control paths, we have 60, 60 control paths. So she started with a contr control pause of seven, as you can see here. Mm. And now, October 11, October, uh, November 2nd, her, her, um, her controls, control pause about 40, mm. about 47, 
um, which is uh, very, very close to where we want to go. Mm -hmm. And maximum pause also um, from 27 went to 73. Those are breathing measurements. Mm -hmm. um, and they are um, basically uh, made through the exercise, three different kinds of exercise that is called steps exercise, um, breathing exercise in movement, um, frollov exercise, that is exercise with a special device, frollov device, it's called, uh, very easy, uh, you can build it yourself, and I'm, uh, I'm advising how to make do-it-yourself device, and then another uh, exercise that is called um, buteco exercise. Mm -hmm. There's more measurements to those things, but basically when you're doing those exercises, you got those results and the, the you see uh, the most important results if you look at the averages that's the um that's uh the pulse is getting much more stable uh goes down and uh, the control pause goes up um and the glucose is it become becomes very very stable and low around 4.5 from the level of five and five and five point five, um, keto, uh, ketones can we see here also getting uh, stable, um, and then we have lipid profile here. She did not take a. Um, we can see it maybe here. Um, not her. Yeah, and then um, we also just got a very interesting results with a person that got. Um, a brain surgery 12 years ago mm -hmm. and since then he had epilepsy every single day uh -huh. from uh, 10 to 15 times a day uh. epileptic seizures after um i will show you this guy he's from his name is uh, Mikhail. he's from um he's from russia and I will show you his results. Um, he started in March, uh, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October. So basically around seven, seven months. And it looks like this. It's a lot of work. <laughs> it's a lot of, it's all the measurements, but uh, to not overwhelm, we just see weekly averages on control pause and it went from 31 to 60 mm -hmm. that I told you. Yeah. Um, and the pulse went from 63 and 78 and 72 to very, very stable around 60 also. And I'm saying visually for people, when your control pause and your pulse are crossing each other, that's a healing. That means a very strong healing. And they're crossing each other very often in the level of 60 on my program. So visually, those things are really strong um, and again the same thing we can see how he's uh, training with with uh, with different uh, devices with different exercises and his energy one of the most important things went from 4.2 to now 4.6 that's the uh, we are measuring actually every day we're measuring energy and when you're talking about mental health it's also very very dependent on that when we're taking uh, uh, anti-nutrients in when we're getting the full uh, protein both in right ratio and all the amino acids together and in the right ratio that's what you cannot get with uh, vegetables and that's what basically uh, you can only get with uh, with animal based nutrition animal based foods and when you get the full complete protein um, there's so many different aspects that work with that and there's um 90 you know 90 percent of serotonin is produced in the gut mm. um, gut and kidney produce serotonin exactly and the root cause of um, basically brain um, disease, any kind of brain 
uh, uh, disease that are sit situated that lives in the brain and we can have we can talk about cancer we can also talk about mental disease right but it's not really brain it's it's both uh, in entero enteric brain which our digestive system it's called enteric brain um, that's interesting it's connected with our normal brain and the can be deficiency in vital nutrients toxicity for the harmful nutrients and that's what we're talking about anti-nutrients right and also metabolic dysregulation we're talking about metabolic syndrome those three aspects so deficiency toxicity for anti-nutrients metabolic dysregulation and the root cause is deficiencies uh, why when we deficiencies in vital nutrients uh, we can efficacy of micronutrients also is much much less um, um, lectins and phytates in beans for example reduce mineral and protein absorption significantly and the meat basically has no anti-nutrients mm. uh, there's some anti-nutrients in uh, egg whites and i made special video oh. about this on my uh, youtube channel cholesterol right so and it's so important that the brain actually makes uh, all of its uh, own supply independent of dietary intake or liver production also so there's so many different aspects here that are crucial for mental health uh, we can say that we don't have leaky gut and this effect is called uh, i don't know if you heard about that this is called no soiling effect no soiling effect that's where your uh, toilet paper always remains white yeah after that's being me. used <laughs> always white yeah yeah that's called no soiling effect mm -hmm. and when you get this that's the um, sign of uh, recovery from leaky gut normalization of uh, work of junctions between um, between the cells in in your gut the Six people I know from 18 year olds up to in their 50s that have Crohn's disease, you know, the IBS, IBD, they're religious vegans. So is that a good thing or is it making it worse? Making it worse. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I had, you know, I worked actually, that's how, that was my first client. That's how I started um, using the essential ketogenic nutrition um, right away. It was or five years ago that was a lady and she was uh, a leader of very big vegan community um i cannot disclose her name yeah of course <laughs> i understand yeah um she was in the middle of her 30s and she is still <laughs> and she had uh, cross disease from the age of 12 mm. and she has two cancers at the same time she had a vulvar tumor mm -hmm. um, that's in the feminine area right vulva yes yeah oh. in the feminine uh, big tumor like this oh never heard of that slow slow growing and she had uh, uh aml leukemia amyloid um leukemia wow. uh, blood cancer and we worked uh, for a whole year in an intensive program we got uh some bettering of some symptoms and things but not a really breakthrough because her energy was very bad she, her energy was non-existing basically it was very hard disheartening <laughs> mm. working with and um and we're, we were trying to take one foot uh out and introduce another and like this trying tried for many 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 months and until it was four things uh, uh, it was macadamia nuts and she said you know misha macadamia nuts all the keto people using macadamia nuts, that's the best nut i say yes it might be the best nut but it still has anti-nutrients um, it can affect your energy um and then it was um um zucchini and she said zucchini. misha zucchini Zucchini, Misha, zucchini is a pure water. Uh, I said, almost, not, not really. Um, and it was cucumbers. And the last, and cucumbers, pure water. 
It's nothing in there. And the last thing, it was uh, avocado. Avocado, that's the best thing you can get in keto, Yeah. right? And I said, you know what, my dear, if you, I'm wor I worked with you now for a year, and now you're eating meat, which is fantastic. You are eating um, inner organs, and you're eating fat, which is fantastic. Mm. But still, you know, we need to uh, break this, well, code to your condition to find out what it is what it is and uh, uh, I really want to try uh, to only only with essential nutrients and nothing else and you know what <laughs> what happened one day she said Misha yes I'm ready okay let's do it let's do it and she said okay tomorrow I will do this um, and she did it and basically uh, in the morning um, it was she lived in another country, we have a different of two hours or something like that, Denmark. And um, early in the morning, my time was around five, between five and six o'clock. I got a, a telephone rings and, um, and she's there and she's screaming. Misha, I got energy. And it was crazy. Wow. I was, I, I got like goosebumps. Yeah, I, I have the goosebumps, goosebumps right now. <laughs> I got goosebumps. And we talked, I'd say, yes, that's what I told you. You know, we, we need to try. And that's how I started with essential ketogenic nutrition. That's the story, basically. Um, and um, this very day, she called me two extra times, <laughs> screaming. Because she did not get energy. You know, when you are in the middle of the 30s and you had Crohn's from the age of 12, mm. you know, it's not just my energy is low. You don't have energy. You just don't have energy. And when you just say, no, I have a little more, no, I got energy. Yeah. Oh, so she was screaming. Yeah. And then I said, wow, this is an interesting thing. And I started really working um, more with essential and defining for people, if you have serious problems, if you really want to change your life so you get a new levels of energy and uh, you need to try this and um it's not completely carnivore it's carnivore but it's carnivore you said lipivore lipivore is a good one you but you also have to understand but that uh, you cannot overeat um um fat okay. either, which is it also people will experience many uh, negative things if they overeat uh, fat also it's not really possible you have to eat pretty fast basically because um, hormone leptin regulate is regulated basically mostly by fat it reacts very fast on fat so um, satiation becomes pretty fast with fat but if you overeat fat you will have diarrhea also and you will have uh, not nice feeling in your gastrointestinal area and things. Oh. And I established some rules of eating that I teach people in my program. When to drink water, when not to drink water, how to eat, what to eat first, how fast to eat, when to stop eating. And all of those things are very crucial um, to experience good adaptation, ketogenic adaptation. And if you experience good adaptation, you will distribute the energy in a very effective way. And then your energy coefficient will be close to one. So you will not lose energy for nothing. And that's the main idea. And if you not lose energy for nothing, then your energy will go for your brain. It will go for immunity to immunity and will go to the physical movement. And if you connect breathing and nutrition together in these Vitruvian men, maybe I should show you this picture of protocol in your program not to be a marathon or not to be an over exerciser no. so i'm going to ask no, you that about that crucial. because this is what yeah. i noticed during the virus and i'd like to know your view during the virus when i was more on social media i would have friends and family say but my friend is a bodybuilder he she works out two hours a day but my friend is a runner they run four or five times a week and then i looked it up online i thought wow so many people not doing well who are extreme in their living an alcoholic yeah. 
yeah, a marathoner, yeah. a bodybuilder. So is that the cytokine storm, IL-6? What, what's going on with this inflammation? Well, basically, basically uh, what is happening, people have lost their sensitivity. They're desensitized. And that's the problem. They're steered by the brain. And when the brain is sick, excuse my French, um, then uh, you, you, do, you, you hurt yourself mm. and you don't feel this. And this is crazy. This is crazy. And, um, and these, I mean, the uh, COVID and the COVID protocols um, exerted by our governments had made it only worse. And uh, it made it more, more extreme, even more extreme. So very big problem, very big problem. So that's my protocol. So I told you about... Uh, I can uh, see the engineering brain. <laughs> yeah, you see energy intake efficiency. Mm -hmm. That's the plane of nutrition breathing. Uh, and then energy distribution efficiency. That's the tri tri triangle, mental, physical, and moon uh, resilience. And the idea is that the human environment, and we, are, we can take responsibility, right? So in our human environment, we can change nutrition, we can uh, change the way we breathe. Uh, make it more effective the way we think, the way we move, the way we steer our immunity, control our immunity. We can do it by exercise and lifestyle change. And that will optimize the cellular environment. That's the whole idea. And energy intake in a human model, in a cellular model, it's called nutrition and respiration, right? Energy distribution in a human model, mental, physical, immune resilience. In cellular model, there's signaling, structure and detox and ECF flow, ECF extracellular fluid. And that is works for all the tissues, muscles, bones, organs, blood, lymph, extracellular matrix, extracellular fluid. So that's basically, I propose this protocol. Um, and um, I uh, published this um, in, uh, in Elsevier. And Elsevier, it's um, uh, biggest uh, Elsevier and Springer, biggest medical uh, publishers. So that's uh, how it looks in the book. Um, universal protocol for health and uh, resilience. And um, this uh, um, article, you can get it online. Um, you can get it for free. Actually, I made it free. And this is in this book, it's called Hormesis in, in Health and Longevity. So this book, you don't need to buy this book. It's um, this article in this book and you can find it. Yeah. I want to so, ask you about when people start carnivore or keto, some people will get diarrhea. What's the reason for that, that last week? So does it eventually go away or are they missing fats or missing some nutrient? Well, basically because ketogenic adaptation is enzymatic adaptation and uh, your enzymes are, are taken kind of um, in the middle of, I mean, I mean um, they are surprised. They are, they are scared that all of a sudden you are changing uh, the, um, uh, the main source of energy from glucose uh, to fats mm. and they need to adapt. So they, so the cells that are producing the enzymes, uh, they are kind of, um, they say, oh, 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 just a second. Wait a little bit. You are eating. <laughs> and they say, oh, uh, we're not ready. We're not ready. <laughs> so that's the picture. Well, thank you for your time today, Misha. Thank you everyone who's stuck it out this far because people today don't, you know, we don't, especially the youth don't have quite the, the long attention span, but hopefully you're still here. And I really recommend to everyone that you share this because Misha has blown my mind. I'm already thinking of people that I'm going to refer to you. One is a family member and a few others. Some are open-minded, some are not. So we'll see who's going to contact you, but your information Fantastic. is vital. And thank you for teaching me so much today. Thank you, my dear. Thank you also for your open mind. Thank you for very interesting questions because, you know, it takes two to tango and we need to tango together. And that's how the life becomes much more interesting, right?
So, and thank you for giving me a possibility to inspire your audience. So, see you soon. See you all soon. No problem. It's not a problem. Hi, everyone. I'm so glad you're back to my show, Growth Factor. I'm Amalia. And today on my show is Misha Sakharov. He's a health, integrative health. <laughs> <laughs> Take it easy, take it easy, Amalia. I didn't eat enough meat today. Stop. Stop.